Jensen Vars here, going to play session number 5 of Legacy Life Among the Ruins. Hardy, the scavenger, Carl, the medic, and Brand, the scout, are out there in the forest, somewhere around this region below the mountains that belong to the outpost of the Lawbringers. They are in a forest at the feet of the mountain to seek for some mushrooms that are supposed to delay the effects of a poison that entered the body of Brand. Everybody says he will go mad eventually. He's got a little, already some of the early symptoms by the color of the skin in his hand. And the last session finished by a strange encounter in the forest that hardly could see something moving in the shadows. Not clear, blurry, as if trying to tell something to them to go away. Eventually, she could find the mushroom that they were looking for, but also a corpse, a dead, unrecognizable body who went through terrible pain. Now, they come together at the meeting point in this dark forest. I found it. I found the mushrooms. This is the famous rock hall that we were looking for, I take it. It is indeed. Shall we go back and prepare the recipe, the rest of the men? I don't think it's a good idea to stay here. I agree, I agree. Let's go for a safer position. So you're sure nobody's following us right now, isn't it? I think so. Just, I thought I saw something, but whatever it was, it's no longer there. Uh, guys? What are we supposed to do with the body? There's no way we can identify who this person was, Brand, unless you have any other ideas. You sure? You checked everything? You wanna check yourself? Go ahead. All right, let me take a look. Um, he's gonna, let me see. It's a, that's a crappy roll. You're right. There's nothing to see here. Poor lad, got the worst of it, but the death must have been quick. Yes, whatever did this, I don't want to know what it is. I think we all know what it is. Whether we decide to ignore that fact, do something about it, it's gonna be up to us. I guess you're right, I guess you're right. Then, let us go back. The characters walk back the forest following the neon leads that are tied by the lawbringers on the trees as a way to identify recognized paths. So it should be difficult for them to get lost if they don't get away from these neon lights. Eventually they go back to the encampment area where the others are and from there they're gonna prepare the recipe as the guards of the log bringers make watch and later on they're going to proceed to the cave where there is a water leak and everybody wants to investigate why do we have a problem with water which is quite severe but first things first we need to make sure Brandt is all right I'm gonna roll. I'm not going to roll anything. So, as they go back to this, the camp, everybody is there. The sergeant, some of his men, some of the herbalists, and other auxiliaries are 
preparing an expedition to the tunnels in the mountains. Actually, it's this place. And the sergeant says, Oh, what a beauty to the eyes, Hardy. Hey, sergeant. We found what we were looking for. Took us a while, however. I can tell that. Glad to see you're in one piece. We have seen a corpse. Somebody's dead. By any chance you know who that was? Anyone's missing? Well, there is a few people missing, yes, but there's no way I can tell who did you find. Can you describe him? Unfortunately, the wounds were too severe. There's nothing left from his face, and his body is itched. But we can tell it's a man, maybe in his young ages. Um, also, his clothes were mostly tore apart, so not much is left. Uh, we are getting used to that, I'm afraid. But no, none of my men at least. I'll keep an eye on and see if anyone is missing from those who don't know yet what happened to their families. But we don't have much time to lose. We need to take a look at the water leaks. Yes, we just need a little time to prepare some recipe and see how it goes to make Brand feel a bit better at least. All right, let me know. Whenever you're ready, I'm gonna take you to the caves. Are you, go are you gonna need to do some resting or are you ready to go on right away? We will be ready to go right away, Sergeant. Carl is gonna prepare the recipe. Seven plus one, it's an eight. That might bring an intervention during this time. Hey, Brown, here's your tea. Try to take it in one shot. It's not gonna test well. I'm gonna bring some Oracle here. I'm playing around with tarot cards to see what they inspire me in this regard. Oops, not fun, I guess. Bran takes a sip from that tea. I didn't say a sip. Take it in one shot. Now. All right, all right. He takes it. For a moment, his eyes go fully white. Hey. Bran, are you all, are you all right? Are you there? Bran starts like shaking his head. Take it off me. Get away from me! Don't touch me! Brand, we are here with you. What's going on with him? Might be a reaction to the mushroom and his condition. Get away from me, fool beast! Definitely calling from a random beat here from Plot and Falling Machine. Moving this forward. Skill challenge. In his head, Brand begins to see himself in a volcanic area. He's standing on a very, very small piece of rock. He looks down at his feet and he sees he can tell the, the rocks are degrading and giving room to the lava. He looks on the skies and meteorites are falling. Even some far and distant meteorites shake some waves that scare him to death. He doesn't want to fall in that lava. Suddenly, a flying beast, as if it's a demon, comes rushing toward him. He sees it coming and his heartbeat rays up at the speed of light. He cannot breathe anymore. He's trying to look around to see where he's standing. It's either the beast is gonna push him away to the lava or something else. He sees the opportunity to time 
his momentum, try to jump on board of this flying demon beast. He tries to recognize whether this beast is or matches what the rumors say about the Night Claws. But it's not anything like he has ever seen before. The beast comes flying with its broken wings and its large teeth. And what he can see in the demon's eyes is nothing but the suffering of a lot of other people. He tries to clear his eyes to see what he's seeing coming, but at the same time keep the momentum coming so when the beast is near him, he will be able to jump in and try not to die. The beast comes rushing to him, it stings its claws in his chest, it hurts, it hurts a lot and the pain is real, however he manages to grab himself from the arms of that beast and he begins to struggle. The beast doesn't want to die either, but very clearly wants to push him in the lava, as if he didn't belong in that domain. On the outside of his head. Brand, react! For God's sake! A lot of people come around Brand to see what's going on, and the sergeant says, Everybody, stay back! Don't get near him! Robert, Laura, Edmund, prepare your rifles! Now, aim at him! Nobody's shooting at anyone, sergeant! Hardy stands in front of Brand to make sure nobody opens fire. You have not seen this, Hardy. We know what this possession makes to him. This is an induced effect. It's the T. Hang on, it's not the natural effect of it. Back into the brand's head. He struggles and fighting. The beast tries to kick him with the leg, but he manages to sting its beast, the beast's own claws on his end, on, on the beast itself, which gives him like a way for him to grab himself and not fall in the lava. The beast struggles to keep on air and they begin flipping around and as if one of them will touch the lava first. He's panicking, but he's managing to hold and he continues the struggle, tries to put himself on top of the beast. And when this lava, when they reach to the lava, Brand wakes up and sees Carl shaking him from his shoulders. Brand, stay with me. You're with me, all right? Carl, uh, Brand, uncontrollable, uses his left metallic arm to push and punch Carl in the chest. It's a seven. Carl tries to dodge and push away the metallic arm, but it's too heavy. He is also taking one harm. They take a break, a breath. He calms down. Brandt, are you all right? That was a vivid nightmare. The sergeant gave the signal to lower the, everybody's weapons. I'm glad you're back with us. How do you feel? Now we need to know if he will feel better or not. Absolutely better.
Everybody calms down a little bit. Laura comes with a glass of water, knowing that water is scarce. The soldiers really look at the water as if they forget what just happened, just remember how thirsty they feel. Some of the auxiliaries from Hardy's caravan themselves bring a um, small barrel of water and begin pouring water to everyone as they remember that everybody's thirsty. It's not going to drink as little as you can. Sergeant says, hold on, hold on. We have rules here for resources. We appreciate the gesture, but we need to administrate that water carefully. Laura, you take over, says the sergeant. And Laura, she's like a herbalist and looks like to be the first hand of the sergeant itself in auxiliary matters, takes care of the water and tries to prepare some logistics <laughs> as if there were any kind of formality in this world left. The day is no longer a day and everything is dark. Nobody knows the time. I feel better. I feel better. Whatever that was, it's good. Do you want to talk about what you saw? Nothing, nothing. Just dreams. Just dreams. He feels a bit the pressure of what he just went through. They prepare themselves to begin the expedition. They talk to the sergeant and uh, begin thinking about the next steps. And after certain preparations, some time, the sergeant points out to one of uh, his best scouts to lead the party to the caves. In these caves, they are supposed to investigate what happened with the water leak and it takes a few hours to to reach over there about two hours not more they arrive to an area that's closer to the mountains people can see on their feet that there is some water coming from there but very scarce and out of the cave also a bit of water is pouring out but it's all rotten and radiated. Everybody looks up to the mountains as if it were just a dream to think about getting fresh water from up there for everybody. But they have to focus on the task at hand to fix the mine's water pipes. As they walk through in the darkness, following the neon red lights of the long ringers, because this is explored territory, they eventually arrive to the entrance of the cave. Let's describe it. The mines are like, are left as if they were left from the before the fall. Nobody wanted to touch anything there because it feels and it's very clear that the place is about to fall down to pieces. So on one side, is it as, as virgin as it is from the old world, but as well as old as the old world was. One can see, as they approach the walls of the mine entrance, that is fully carved of old artistic forms and shapes. The figures of robotic arms are 
pulled in this tone and they are carved with such a level of detail that it's either made by superhumans or something else. The android arms coming down from the rocks are almost undistinguishably natural. Hardy touches this entrance of the stone just to feel something. And it feels fresh, new, as if it were, as if it transported her back to the times of the before the apocalypse. Carl will say, what are you doing? In a way, trying to sense how we're gonna die today, Carl. Ha ha. Is that what this stone is telling you? In a way, yes. This Scout Parsons will say, All right, my job is done. Got to go back to the sergeant. Need anything else from me? Yeah, wait. Before you go, we need to ask you something. The sergeant said that the horsemen were involved in this pipe's leak. How did we know that? Well, the horsemen are always watching. They're trying to constantly find weak spots in our encampments, outposts, and even water sources. They definitely found one. So if anyone is to blame, it is them. I wouldn't think anyone else trying to destroy the very water source that everybody drinks from. Not even elder opposition politicians or any other bastards that want to sabotage us. Fair enough. Any other thing you have seen? When was the last time you saw the horseman? Was it long ago? No, it was not long ago. But it's a bit strange because they didn't sh show up again either since the last time so I would have expected them to be more active lately but they are not we haven't crossed them out what do you think about the dead man we found in the forest if it isn't one of your herbalists could it be one horseman rider no I don't think so it's very strange to find one isolated and lonely dead body from the horsemen. They move in groups. They know how to deal with the darkness. How do they eliminate? And do they really mount horses? Wait, you're saying you never saw them? Not from around here, Parsons. Well, for starters, they are fast and they are brutal. They have some sort of light that we didn't identify how it works, that leaves a trace behind. So even when they get separated, the horseman on the back can know when the last horseman followed after. That sounds like a useful tool. You really don't know what it is. No, I think it's attached to their body. So unless you find one of them, 
and with the equipment intact. Well, good luck then. The only thing we have is a broken device, but it's so broken that we could not tell how it's fueled or powered. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Thank you, Parsons. We're going to take a look inside and see what could have damaged the pipes. Wish us good luck. I wish you good luck. Everybody's counting on you. Then, after some preparation, they eat some energy bars, some mushroom-powered food. Brand is the only one not eating anything. He seemed to be in shock for some reason. You're not eating, Brand. Yeah, trying to figure out what's going on in my head. You should eat something. Nah, I'm gonna puke it and it will be wasted food if I do that. All right, do let us know if you feel anything, all right? Sure, boss. You sure you don't want to give me my gun back? I don't know, it sounds like a bad idea. Come on, we don't know what's gonna be in inside. Yeah, and you'll be there. We also don't know how you will react. What if you got one of those visions with the rifle in your hands, you could kill us all. He's got a point, Brand. Fine. But if I continue to feel better, I'm gonna insist. Point taken. Let's go. They enter the cave. They raise the power of their fuel-powered torches to increase the sight around them. It seems to be like an old mine. Let me take a look at what's inside. And as they enter, the first thing they will see is a lot of skeletons. Old remnants of bones, both human and animals. It's pretty dark otherwise. And nothing special to see for the first steps they take into. Looks like they will find someone. As they walk through the first area of the tunnels, in pure silence, with nothing else to see, they will find, or they will hear, a voice. Someone is saying something. As they try to make out of the voices, they realize this is no human voice. This is no recognizable language. This is a horrible sound. Of what seems to be a beast. Hardy tries to illuminate the path and try to see what it is.
they seem to be, or it seems to be, a single beast. And it's walking around in circles. As if they were already aware of the characters. But still not attacking and not doing anything. Just walking in circles within the entrance of this mine. And then suddenly it stops and looks up. Carl, Abra and, and Hardy prepare their guns and aim at this thing. It has no eyes. It seems to be on four legs and some large claws on its toes. The beast looks up at them and then disappears in the shadow. That's an intelligent beast. And it doesn't seem like it's aggressive. What impression did you get? I don't know. We need to figure out what is going on. Let's follow, but be careful. I really think I should have the gun. If anyone can help you, it's gonna be me. Fine, take your gun, Branch. That was fast. What was it? I don't know, some sort of wolf, fox, or something like that. They walk through the mines and try to identify the pipes. Are they easy to find? Apparently not. Looks like the water pipes are not out here, so in the shallow area of the mines. We're gonna go a bit deeper and seek construction areas and sites. That seems like the case. But be careful. Could I bring an element of the adventure? The three characters advance through the mines as they see an entrance and a path going downstairs to what seems to be a wider and more open place inside the mines. Full of pipes everywhere stairs and sources of wasted water as well as other things they come down the stairs and they will see someone there it is going to be a masked beast of four legs in better light they see it is a mask under a hood, the beast is laying down as if injured. It was the same resemblance of a monster that they saw earlier. They look at it from afar and aim, try to assess the situation whether there is any danger, but seems that there is no danger at the moment. Hardy says, don't do anything stupid, and we won't do anything stupid either. The beast roars. Is that a yes or no? Don't move. They come down, and the beast begins to speak. I won't harm you. I think I know. Who are you? And everybody comes down here to this position. It's very dark. Let me see if I can set the mood of the lightning here. I think this is much better. Some tones of blue. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Okay. You must be 
what was the name of the faction again? One of the echoes. Mm-hmm. How many of you are? Three, four, ten? In a desperate need to supply your appetite, your thirst, your hunger, your fears. Who is this idiot? Shut up. Are we safe here? Let's see what does he answer. You are safer here than anyone else outside. So long you are near me, you are safe. If that counts. What happened to you? Why are you here? And the beast is going to slowly take its mask off. Brand is ready with his gun in case anything happens. And then it shows its face. What it resembles to be a mixture of a wolf and a man without eyes. Darkness in the holes of the eyes shows up in this person's face. Hardy looks away for a second, trying to catch up with her consciousness, and then catch up again with him again. He covers his face again. His hands seem to be claws of a snake-like monster. His left arm, metallic, replaced, thin and full of utilities. His mask's eyes grow green, however. And it proceeds to say, Removed. My eyes are gone. Forever. For the claws of the horde are as precise as a laser in the dark. Now I can hear them all over the place. Beasts, monsters, speaking and whispering in my ears. And you are not sh you are sure this is not cause of the plague. Of course I am not sure. How can I be sure of something I can only hear in my head? Can you describe something? Our friend here also had some visions in the darkness. I don't want to talk about that. I need to check a plot question, whether this can be or not what I'm thinking. What? Flying demons? Broken wings? In a world full of fire? Where the light comes from the very lava itself and not from any star in the skies? Um, Brandt is a bit worried. That's... And let me guess, they went for your eyes. Actually, they didn't, or I didn't let them try. Huh, you didn't fall then. In the lava, in the lava. If you fall in the lava, you will never be able to see again. If you ever have that dream again, try to avoid it. Weather. All right. Those things that removed your eyes, are they from this world or something else?
They are from this world, but they take you somewhere else if they find you. Brandt had these visions and these sightings after I prepared a tea for him with mushrooms. It's a, a recipe we were investigating made of bracol out of the forest. Could this be something helpful to you? Yes, I will appreciate it and I see it as a sign of friendship if you do. But let me advise you, never, never drink more than one of these than three moons. No matter the pain, no matter the madness, no matter your voices, do not ingest brocol in less than three moons. I got it. I'd rather avoid that thing if I can. You will not be able to hold it back for a long time. Huh. What a nice dude. Are you always like that? Like what? Never mind. So, do you know anything about the water leak around here? Yes, and you should hurry up if you don't want to waste the rest of your water. You humans need it more than us. So, what happened to it? The horde in the dark expresses itself in the form of large worms. They will try to squeeze you first, but it's the venom what you want to avoid. The venom that your friend here has in its bloodstreams. Fantastic. Those things. Let me check how. Those things are in war. In war? With whom? With themselves. They are fighting for control. Down in the south. Far from our sight. From for our lands. However, one of them, the Ikshal, is looking up to the north, to our lands to seek an advantage in their battle. We are nothing more than other than a resource to them. Well, let them come. You have never f fought, faced anything with these fears. All right, hold on everybody. Let's stop for a while here. Let me check for an interruption. We cannot lose any time. We need to fix the water pipes. We need to find where is the leak exactly. Will you help us? How can I help you? I can no longer see. Look, I know what you've been through. Seen wars, done wars. We need to get water, otherwise there's nothing to help you in your fight, understood? Now, help us. Where is this leak? You probably fought a beast. 
and that could have led to damages in this place. Where were you? Can you guide us or not? I do not know, but I can try. Okay. So it's a physical damage then in the water pipes, I hope. Maybe. The blind beast advances and he introduces himself as they come down further and further steps into further darkness. As they walk through, he presents himself. My name is Anzor. They used to call me the Untamed. And now, probably the Blind. Huh, so this guy has some sense of humor after all. Says Brown trying to bring some humor and some, let's say, lightheartedness to this place. So what were you doing here exactly? I came here to pay the price. That doesn't sound good. The Ishtar made a pact. Or they take whatever they will. But for our eyes, they give us 20 moons before they destroy us. So this was a sacrifice then. He doesn't respond to that question. They continue following the path. And they go deeper and deeper until they find a source of water. Again. As they go down to the stairs, Anzor stops suddenly. Is it here? He doesn't respond. Anzor, is it here? Are we here? And he says, prepare yourselves. The storm is coming. With that, I will finish today incredibly tense tension so much for watching until the next one jensen wars here i hope you enjoyed this little session today bye bye